We're studying English with TV, and Ross is freaking out. Okay, so I'm going to be the only one standing there alone when the ball drops? It's New Year's Eve, and he doesn't have a date. We're going to do an in-depth analysis of this scene from Friends to study English and the characteristics of American English and the American accent. Studying like this can help you increase your listening comprehension and confidence speaking English. You'll get fast English. And we'll have fun talking about the culture of New Year's in the United States as we go. I make new videos every Tuesday to help you speak faster, more natural English. You'll even be watching TV without subtitles. If you like this video or you learned something new, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe with notifications. I'd love to see you back here. We've already studied two scenes from this episode where the six friends make a pact to spend New Year's Eve together, no dates. But that's not how it works out. Let's watch the full scene that we'll study today. But tell me something. What does the phrase no date pact mean to you? Okay, look, I'm sorry, okay? It's just that Chandler has somebody and Phoebe has somebody. I thought I'd ask Fun Bobby. Fun Bobby? Your ex-boyfriend Fun Bobby? Yeah. Okay, so on our no date evening, Three of you now are going to have dates. Uh, four. Four. Not five. Five. <laughs> Sorry. How was catching an earlier flight? Okay, so I'm going to be the only one standing there alone when the ball drops? Oh, come on. We'll, ha we'll have a big party, and no one will know who's with whom. Hey, no, this is Ross is so upset, he's talking over Rachel's last phrase, who's with whom. Who's with who? Who's with whom? Which one do you use when? Don't worry, we'll go over when to use who and whom later in this video. In a moment, we'll do the analysis. First, I want to make sure you know in January on this channel, there will be a 30-day challenge. Learn 105 vocabulary words with me to start your 2021. One video every day for 30 days starting the first Tuesday in January. Click here or in the video description to get on my special student list to follow the series and blow up your vocabulary this January. Now, let's do that analysis. But tell me something. Tell me something. Tell me something. Stress on tell. Tell me something. And then some more on some as well. We have a true T starting tell. That's because it starts a stressed syllable. This L is a dark L, and you do not need to lift your tongue tip there. The next sound is a consonant, and Americans wouldn't lift their tongue tip there. They would say tell. That's the dark L. It's made with the back of the tongue, so not the tip. Leave the tip down. Tell me. Tell me. So right from that dark sound into the M with the lips closing. Tell me something, something, something. First syllable stress, and he doesn't say something. He says something, something, something. He changes the NG sound to just an N sound, something. This TH is an unvoiced TH, and the tongue tip does have to come through the teeth for that. Tell me something. But tell me something. But tell me something. But tell me something. What does the phrase no date pack mean to you? Okay. What does the phrase no date pact? What does the phrase, so in the first part of this sentence, we have most of our stress on what. What does the phrase, and then the other three words just come in on the downward shape of that pitch. What does the phrase, what, do you notice that's a stop T? Because the next word begins with a consonant. What does the phrase, did you learn that this word is pronounced does? That's true when it's fully pronounced, but it's often reduced like here. And here it's not does, but it's does, does. And it links smoothly into the next word. Does the, does the, does the, does the. So what is stressed? It has more length and up down shape. What does the, does the, does the. These two words are said more quickly and they're flatter. What does the phrase, what does the phrase, what does the phrase, what does the phrase, what does the phrase? In the word phrase, the letter S makes the Z sound. That's a weak sound at the end, so it's not phrase, but it's also not phrase, an S. It's got less air. Phrase, phrase, phrase. What does the phrase, what does the phrase, what does the phrase, 
What does the phrase no date pact mean to you? No date pact. All of these words have a bit of a stressed feel. No date pact mean to you. So he's making this phrase clear, no date pact, a little bit almost of a lift between each word, da, 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 rather than no date pact. It's not that linked together, no date pact, making each word more clear. No date pact mean to you. No date pact mean to you. No date pact mean to you. Even though he is making it more clear and separating the words a little bit, he does still make this a stop T. He doesn't say no date pact, no date. He says no date, no date, no date, no date pact mean to you. Ending KT sound cluster. I'm trying to decide if I think I hear the T. I'm not totally sure. I think it is probably weekly released. Date packed, packed. Date packed, date packed, date packed mean to you. Mean to you. And then we have three words. Mean has the most stress. Mean to, mean to. The word to, it just comes in on the way down from the peak of stress of mean. Mean to, mean to. Mean to, mean to, mean to you. And it's reduced, isn't it? It's not to you, but it's to you, to you. The vowel there changes to the schwa. To you, it is a true T. That can be reduced as well, but here it's not. Mean to you, you, you. A little bit of that up-down shape. Mean to you. Mean to you. Mean to you. So a pact is a promise but it's almost even stronger than a promise. You're really committing to doing something when you make a pact. No date pact mean to you. No date pact mean to you. No date pact mean to you. Look, I'm sorry, okay? Look, I'm sorry. The word look said really quickly, it's flat, it's not stressed. Look, 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 look. You might not even recognize that as the word look. You might also hear, listen, look, listen, said at the beginning of a phrase like this. She's probably already said that she's sorry. She's probably already apologized for this, but he's really upset about it. So he's bringing up the fact that she made a pact here. It wasn't just a minor commitment. She really committed. Look, I'm sorry, okay? Look, I'm sorry, okay? Look, I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry, okay? Really smooth linking there. I'm sorry, okay? No breaks, no skips in the voice, just smooth connection. The M linking right into the S. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Sorry with the ah as in father vowel plus R. Make sure you let your jaw drop and have some space before you make the R. Saw, ah. Uh, Sar, sorry. I'm sorry, okay? The ending E vowel unstressed links right into the O diphthong with no break. Sorry, okay? And then the pitch goes up again. I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry, okay? It's just that Chandler has somebody and Phoebe has somebody. I thought I'd ask fun Bobby. It's just that Chandler has somebody? So her pitch goes up here because she's listing things. And when we list things, our pitch goes up at the end of each one. Chandler has somebody. Phoebe has somebody. I thought I'd ask Fun Bobby. So when we get here, I bet we'll see that the intonation goes down. It's just that Chandler has somebody and Phoebe has somebody. I thought I'd ask Fun Bobby. It's just that Chandler has somebody and Phoebe has somebody. I thought I'd ask Fun Bobby. It's just that Chandler has somebody and Phoebe has somebody. I Thought I'd ask Fun Bobby. Fun Bobby. So it does. So she's naming who has dates for New Year's. And there are three people on that list. So the intonation goes up for Chandler. Chandler has somebody. Phoebe has somebody. I thought I, I'd ask Fun Bobby. And then the intonation goes down, showing she's done with her list. So let's talk about the intonation, the stress of the first part of this thought group. It's just that Chandler has somebody. It's just that Chandler has somebody. 
It's just that Chandler has somebody. It's just that Chandler has somebody. So because the overall trend of this phrase is going up, rather than our shape of stress being like this, Chandler, it goes like this. Chandler has somebody. The dips go down and up. It's just that, it's just that these three words said very quickly. It's just that, it's just that, it's just that. Can you do that? To make that so smooth, you need to drop the T like she does and you need to reduce the vowel. It's not that, but it's that, 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 that. A schwa said really quickly, stop T because the next word begins with a consonant. It's just that, it's just that, it's just that Chandler. It's just that Chandler. It's just that Chandler. It's just that Chandler has somebody. She pronounces that with no D. Chandler has somebody. The word has, written in IPA with the Z consonant. When a Z, an ending Z, links into a beginning S, like here, has some, has some, it's likely that you'll drop the Z to help link and just connect the S in. Has somebody, has somebody, has somebody. So you don't need to try to make a Z, Z, and then an S. S, has somebody. You can just connect them with an S. Chandler has somebody. Chandler has somebody. Chandler has somebody. I want to talk about her pronunciation of somebody. So that's not what you'll see in a dictionary. She's giving that second syllable stress, somebody. The word is written in the dictionary with first syllable stress, somebody. Or, th so this vowel can be a uh, or a. Uh. Somebody, somebody. It can even be a schwa, somebody. All three of those pronunciations work. Obviously, you can get by with doing it with second syllable stress because she does, but it's not ac the actual pronunciation. More common to hear it with first syllable stress, and I think this pronunciation is more common, the uh as in butter, somebody, somebody. But here she does the ah uh as in father, somebody. Somebody, 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 and Phoebe has somebody. And Phoebe has somebody. The word and becomes n, 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 n. Just very fast, linked right into the F sound for Phoebe. N, 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 fee, n, fee, n, Phoebe. Phoebe has somebody. Same stress, rather than Phoebe has somebody. It's Phoebe, fee, it's going up because she's listing things. Phoebe has somebody. She does the same pronunciation here, or she stresses the second syllable and does the ah uh, as in father but more common would be first syllable stress and the uh as in butter, somebody. But she says, somebody. Again, has linking, just drop that Z sound, put them together quickly. Phoebe has somebody. Phoebe has somebody. Phoebe has somebody. Phoebe has somebody, I. Somebody, I. Somebody, I. A little bit now, the pitch going back down on I, she links those two together and then puts a break. Very smooth connection between somebody and I. Somebody, I. Somebody, I. Somebody, I. Thought I'd ask fun Bobby. Thought I'd ask. Thought I'd ask. Do you hear how the stress goes? Da, da, da. Thought I'd ask. I unstressed, lower in pitch, said more quickly. Thought, a little bit more length. There's a flap T there linking those two words. Thought I'd, thought I'd. Da, 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 da. Thought I'd ask. Thought I'd ask. Now the D here also comes between two vowel or diphthong sounds. The I sound of I'd and the A vowel of ask. So a D between two vowel or diphthongs is the same as a T between two vowel or diphthongs and it's a flap. Now here you're saying, wait, these are not vowel or diphthongs. That's true. But when we're talking about these rules, we're talking about sounds, not letters. So thought, unvoiced th, aw as in law, t. So now the t comes between two vowel or diphthong sounds. That's why it's a flap t. So these flaps will help you smooth this out. Thought I'd ask, ra 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 ra, because you don't have to stop the air for that. Thought I'd ask. Thought I'd ask. Thought I'd ask. Thought I'd ask fun Bobby. Fun Bobby. Fun. So the adjective here, his nickname, he's become known as not just Bobby, but 
Fun Bobby. You must have a pretty good personality if your nickname is Fun Bobby. Fun Bobby. Fun Bobby. Fun Bobby. Fun Bobby, your ex-boyfriend Fun Bobby? So this is a yes, no question. Yes, no questions also tend to go up in intonation. So it's Fun Bobby, your ex-boyfriend Fun Bobby. We have these uh, uh, little glide down and then up in pitch for our stressed syllables. Fun Bobby, your ex-boyfriend Fun Bobby? Fun Bobby, your ex-boyfriend Fun Bobby? Fun Bobby, your ex-boyfriend Fun Bobby? Fun Bobby, Fun Bobby. It's different than statement form, Fun Bobby, Fun Bobby. There, you're telling somebody. But when you say it with intonation, Fun Bobby, you're asking somebody. Did I hear that right? Did you say Fun Bobby? Fun Bobby, Fun Bobby, Fun Bobby, your ex-boyfriend, Fun Bobby? Your ex-boyfriend? Your ex-boyfriend? The word your gets reduced, doesn't it? It's not your, it's your. Said quickly, your, 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 your ex, your ex, your ex, your ex-boyfriend? Your ex-boyfriend? Your ex-boyfriend? Your ex-boyfriend, Fun Bobby? Boyfriend, Fun Bobby? Boyfriend, Fun. No, that's not how we say that. It's very common to drop the D in this combination, N, D, consonant. And that's what he does. He doesn't say boyfriend fun. He says boyfriend fun right from the N into the F, smooth connection, no D. Boyfriend fun? Boyfriend fun? Boyfriend fun, Bobby? Yeah. 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 Statement, not asking, but telling, answering. Yeah. Up, down shape. Yeah. 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 Okay, so on our no date evening. Ross isn't too happy, so he's really stressing a lot of words, isn't he? Okay. Okay. Second syllable stress leading up to the peak there on the diphthong. Okay. 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 Okay, so on our no date evening. So on our no date evening. And each one of those words gets stress. No date evening. So on our no date evening. So on our no date evening. So on our no date evening. So on our, so on our. These words are less stressed. They glide together really smoothly, don't they? So on our. Sometimes when people need to link two vowel or diphthong sounds, they have a hard time with that. It feels too sloppy, but we want that. No break in sound. On can be pronounced with Oz and father or Oz and law. So on. It might help you to link if you think about going through a W sound between those two. So on, so on, so on are. Then the N consonant links right into the next word. So on are. So on are. So on R. So on R. I would say he's making that the ah as in father vowel plus R. It can be reduced. It can be er, er, so on R, so on R. But he's saying so on R, so on R. Very smoothly connected. So on R. So on R. So on R. No date evening. No date evening. With all of his stress, he actually gives us a true T here in date. I hear that release. And by fully pronouncing that T, he's making it feel even more stressed. No date evening. He's annoyed because they made a pact. No one would bring a date. It would just be the six of them. And now Chandler, Phoebe, and Monica are all bringing dates. No date evening. No date evening. No date evening. Let's look at the word evening. This looks like it could be three syllables, evening, but it's not. Evening, evening, first syllable stress, evening. Evening, evening, evening. Three of you now. Three of you now. Some stress on three. Three of you now. And it all links together smoothly. There are no breaks there. Three of you now. Three of you now. Oh. Three of you now. Three of you now. Three of you now. See if you can do it that smoothly. Avoid 
the temptation you may have to separate or more clearly pronounce your words. Three of you now. This is a little bit tricky. It's the unvoiced THR cluster. Thur, thur, thur. So the tongue tip starts just through the teeth. Thur. Then it pulls back into the mouth, back and up just a little bit. It's still pretty far forward, but it's not touching anything. Thur, thur. Three of you now. The word of, I would write that with a schwa V. Three of, three of, three of you now. Three of you now, three of you now, three of you now are going to have dates. Are going to have dates. So there was a little break there, but now all of these words flow together really smoothly. That's a thought group. A thought group is all of the words that flow together very smoothly between breaks. Are going to have dates. Are gonna have dates. Are gonna have dates. Are gonna have dates. Are gonna have dates. Dates definitely the most stress word there. Are gonna have. Are gonna have. Are gonna have. Going to of course reduces to gonna. So common. And the R consonant links right into that G with no break. Are gonna. Are gonna. Are gonna. Are gonna. Are gonna. Are gonna have. Are gonna have dates. Are gonna have dates. Are gonna have dates. Are gonna have dates. Uh, four. Uh, uh, this is the thinking vowel in American English. Uh, as in butter, very relaxed neck, throat. Uh, uh, four. Up down shape of stress statement. Uh, four. Uh, four. Uh, four. In IPA, you'll see this with the aw uh, as in law vowel. When this vowel is followed by R, it's not pure. The R influences it, so it's not aw, far, but it's o, for, for. So the lips round a little bit more and the tongue shifts back a bit more than for a pure aw vowel. Four, 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 four. Ross replies, four, up down shape. Four. 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 Up five. Up. Up five. Rachel has to correct him. She also has a date. Up five. Up down shape of stress. Up five. Up five. Up five. 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 Again, quick up down shape. He's not saying five. How could there be five? But he's saying five. Statement acknowledging that it's happening. Five. Fine. Fine. <laughs> Sorry. 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 By making her intonation go up, her attitude sort of looks like not really sorry, right? She's not saying sorry, sorry, but sorry. 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 Paolo's catching an earlier flight. Paolo's catching. A little bit of stress on the name. Paolo's catching, more on the verb, Paolo's catching an earlier flight. So we have quite a few stressed words there. Paolo's catching an earlier flight. Paolo's catching an earlier flight. Paolo's catching an earlier flight. So the other syllables of our stressed words don't have that stress feel. Paolo's. Olos, olos, two unstressed syllables, lower in pitch. Paolo's catching and ching and the unstressed syllable there, linking into the article, ching and ching and lower in pitch. That's a valley compared to this peak. Catching an earlier. Two more unstressed syllables here in our stress word. They're also flatter in pitch and said more quickly. Catching an earlier flight. And she does do a light true T release there. It's pretty common to make a stop T in a case like that. Paolo's catching an earlier flight. Paolo's catching an earlier flight. Paolo's catching an earlier flight. But everything links together really smoothly, ending N consonant into the stressed syllable here, er, beginning with the er as in bird. Vowel R consonant combination. Er. You don't need much jaw drop for that sound. Er. Earlier. An earlier. An earlier. An earlier flight. An earlier flight. An earlier flight. An earlier flight. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. First syllable stress. This word can go either way. Okay. It actually sounds kind of like he's making it a G. Okay. Okay. You'll definitely hear that every once in a while. Okay. 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 So I'm going to be. So I'm going to be. Really quick little break there. So I'm going to be. So I'm going to be. He really stresses I'm. So I'm going to be. He's feeling really bad. There are six of them. And now he is the only one who will be alone. Going to. Gonna. Gonna be. Gonna be. Everything really smoothly connected. So I'm going to be. So I'm going to be. So I'm going to be the only one. The only one. Again, just a little lift here. He's breaking this out and really stressing it. The only one. The word the pronounced here with the E as in she vowel because the next word begins with a diphthong. We do that when the next word begins with a vowel or diphthong. At least that's the rule. But I have noticed we don't follow it that closely. But here he does. The only. The only. The only. The only. The only one. 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 The only one standing there alone when the ball drops. When you listen to a fragment like this on a loop, you really hear the rhythm of it, don't you? Standing there alone when the ball drops. Standing there alone when the ball drops. Standing there alone when the ball drops. Da 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 da. It really starts to sound and feel like music. Standing there alone when the ball drops. Standing there alone. So we can really feel our stress. Standing there alone when the ball drops. Yes, no question. So the pitch goes up. Standing there alone when the ball drops. 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 If you think of it as a song, as music, does it help you? With the speed of it, standing there alone when the ball drops. 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 So our unstressed syllables, ding there, ding there, ding there, ding there, ding there, have less mouth movement so we can get them out more quickly. Ding there, ding there. Standing there alone when the ball drops, when the, when the, when the, when the, when the, when the. Say those as quickly and as simply as you can. When the ball drops. When the ball drops. When the ball drops. When the ball drops. Ball drops. Let's talk about our L here. It's a dark L. And it's followed by a consonant. So you don't need to lift your tongue tip for that. Ball. That dark sound is made with the back part of the tongue. The tip doesn't have to do anything. So don't move your tip. And we'll just slow things down. Keep your tongue tip down. Ball drops. Ball drops. Ball drops. Ball drops. The DR cluster often gets turned into what sounds like a JR. And I think that's what he's doing here. Drops instead of drops. J -j 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 drops. 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 Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Come on. She lets sort of a popcorn nasal quality come into her voice. Sort of showing sympathy, but also kind of fake sympathy. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Oh, oh, come on. Oh, come on. Two word phrase, stress on the first word. They link together smoothly and the intonation just falls down for the word on. Come on. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. We'll have we'll have a big party and we'll have we'll have so she repeats herself. We'll have and as she gets more excited, her intonation goes up. We'll have 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 Notice we will is being pronounced wool. Wool. I would write that with the schwa. Wool. 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 And that's a dark L. Again, do not lift your tongue tip. Takes too much time. It's an unstressed word said very quickly. Not necessary. It's just going to mess up the sound. Over here too. Wool. 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 We'll have. 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 We'll have a big party. 
We'll have a big party. We'll have a V. The V sound links right into the schwa for a very smooth connection. We'll have a big party. Big party. We'll have a big party. We'll have a big party. We'll have a big party. What do you notice about the T here? Big party. Big party. Big party. It looks like it's pronounced party. Is that true? Big party. Big party. Big party. No, that's a flap T. So the rule for flap T is it's a flap T if it comes between two vowel or diphthong sounds or if it comes after an R before a vowel or diphthong. And that's what we have here. Party, party, da -da 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 -da, flap of the tongue. Party, 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 and no one will know who's with her. N no one, n no one. Again, she starts and restarts two N sounds. N -n 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 no one. And no one, and no one, and no one will know who's with her. No one will know who's with who. So we have stress on no. No one will know who's with who. No one will know who's with her. No one will know who's with her. No one will know who's with her. And this word starts to get cut off because Ross starts talking. Actually, it's probably who's with whom. You can't hear it, but grammatically that's correct. So this is the object. That's why we put the M. If you can replace who with the word he, then it's just who. If you can replace it with the word him, then it's whom. Same with she or her. So does it make sense to say he's with her? Yes, it does. Therefore, it's who's with whom. No one will know who's with her. No one will know who's with her. No one will know who's with her. So we have our stress on no and no. Different words, different spellings, but same pronunciation, N consonant, O diphthong, no one will. Now, how is the word will pronounced? No one will know. No one will know. No one will know. No one will know. No one will. It's really like just a contraction. I don't think you can get away with writing it like this, but in pronunciation, definitely. No one will know who's with who. No one will know who's with her. No one will know who's with her. No one will know who's with her. No one will know who's. So the word who and whom, those both have a silent W. Written in IPA, H, U, the apostrophe S adds a light Z sound. Who's, who's, who's with whom. Whom in IPA. No one will know who's with whom. The word with said quickly with, 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 with whom, with whom. No one will know who's with her. No one will know who's with her. No one will know who's with her. Let's listen to this whole conversation one more time. But tell me something. What does the phrase no date pack mean to you? Okay, look, I'm sorry, okay? It's just that Chandler has somebody and Phoebe has somebody. I thought I'd ask Fun Bobby. Fun Bobby? Your ex-boyfriend Fun Bobby? Yeah. Okay, so on our no date evening, three of you now are going to have dates. Uh, four. Four. Not five. Five. <laughs> Sorry, Paolo's was catching an earlier flight. Okay, so I'm going to be the only one standing there alone when the ball drops? Oh, come on. We'll, ha we'll have a big party and no one will know who's with her. Next week, we'll study the final scene in this four-part series. We're at the party, counting down to midnight. Here's the scene we'll study. In 20 seconds, it'll be midnight. And the moment of joy is upon us. <laughs> Looks like that no date pack thing worked out. You know, I uh, just thought I'd throw this out here. I'm no math whiz, but I do believe there are three girls and three guys right here. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't feel like kissing anyone tonight. Oh, I can't kiss anyone. So, so I'm kissing everyone? No, no, no. You can't kiss Ross. That's your brother. Oh, yeah, that's Oh, perfect, perfect. So now everybody's going to kiss but me. All right, somebody kiss me. Somebody oh, kiss me. It's not. midnight. Somebody kiss me. Oh, somebody no, kiss me. It's midnight. It's one oh, time. Oh, oh, If you didn't catch all that, don't worry. You'll get the full in-depth analysis next week. So stick with me, come back here. We're learning English with TV 
and we're improving your listing comprehension. If you love this kind of analysis, I have over 150 videos like this that aren't on my YouTube channel in my online school, Rachel's English Academy. There's also audio that goes with each lesson to help you with your imitation skills to really change your habits. This kind of training can transform your voice and your confidence. To sign up, visit rachelsenglishacademy.com. While you're waiting for next week's video to drop, check out more of my videos on my YouTube channel, including this one. And don't forget to subscribe with notifications. I make new videos on the English language every Tuesday, and I'm doing a 30-day vocabulary challenge in January that you won't want to miss. That's it, and thanks so much for using Rachel's English.